Okay guys, Jay Prada Performance here. Uh, a lot of people ask this question and it's a good question, I'm going to address it. Um, so what we've got here, not really relevant, but this is a C6 and what is relevant is it's got a full manual valve body in it uh, with fixed pressure. Okay, so the question is why is the pressure lower at low RPM and then the pressure still kind of creeps up with RPM? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that and I'm going to show you this. Uh, so let's, let's kind of watch the pressure at idle and watch it come up and see how much it comes up with RPM. Uh, so if we look here, uh, this is our main pressure gauge and this is our tachometer so let's kind of uh gonna be kind of hard for me to do this one-handed but let me try to fire this dyno up and we're going to look at rpm and we're going to look at pressure so you can see that relationship there and i'll try to talk over this it's loud so let's give it a shot okay So we got roughly 180 pounds there, and we're about 900 RPM. So I'm just gonna, we're just in neutral. Doesn't really matter what gear we're in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this up. Okay, good. So you can see we came up about, um, I think it hit about 230 or something. Uh, so anyways, let's go and uh, do a little look at the schematic here and I'm gonna show you why this is occurring. So give me one second. Okay, back at your favorite book. So what's happening here so a couple things, you know, the obvious thing is the faster the pump turns, the more flow it has, okay? So it becomes a little bit more difficult to bleed off the additional oil flow. Um, you know, also too, as that temperature increases, the oil viscosity is going to get thinner. And that pressure will actually come down some. Uh, that was... That was pretty cold, what I just did, so uh, that pressure peaked out around, seemed to level off right, right around 225, 230 or something. I would expect that once this gets hot, and of course it depends on what you have for oil. If it's a synthetic oil that's more temperature stable and that sort of thing, it's going to, you know, the viscosity is not going to change as much as a conventional oil. Uh, so what happens is, this is the spring, and this is just a real, it's just a real heavy spring. So the original springs were very light. Uh, let me see, I have one of those. Yeah, and it's dual spring. These are the, these are actually aftermarket, so they're a little heavier. But you can see that it's a much, you know, a much smaller wire diameter and everything. It is longer, but... Uh, the wire diameter is much different, so that's what makes the biggest difference. Um, and again, this is an aftermarket spring here, so it's even tighter than a normal factory one. Uh, so anyways, here's, here's the real reason, or the biggest reason. A little bit hard to explain, maybe I should have shown this in the valve body rather than here, but Okay, this is your boost valve, all right? So the way pressure increases is by increasing hydraulic load on the boost valve. And the difference is, as the pressure regulator moves up to start bleeding off, it first goes, starts bleeding off into the cooler and lube circuit, and then it starts dumping out back into the pan you know, as it travels further. So what's happening is we're compressing this very heavy spring 
as the valve travels and it's changing the spring rate. Okay, so obviously the more you compress this spring, the more resistance it has against the valve. Of course, the lighter spring does that too. So you definitely get more, of, you, you definitely get some variation with the factory setup, but you get a lot more variation when we're no longer running hydraulic load. So the difference with the hydraulic load is it doesn't matter how much this valve travels, this load on this boost valve stays the same. You know, it's not, you're not compressing that fluid and, you know, it's not a spring, it's, it's fluid, so it doesn't compress. Uh, so there's always a constant pressure there. It's not uh, varying with, you know, by collapsing that spring and, and the spring gets heavier and hotter and hotter to collapse the more you try to do that. Uh, so I hope this made sense to you. I don't know if I did a great job of explaining it or not, but uh, yeah, again, this is just a question a lot of people have when they go to a, a fixed pressure valve body because the majority of them are done like ours with the spring. And, you know, honestly, I like the variation in pressure uh, because at idle, when you're sitting at a traffic light, if we can relieve the system of you know, 20 or 30 pounds or something great. You know, we don't need a lot of pressure sitting there. And then as you give it RPM, that's when we need to have a little more pressure. So I like the variation. And it's not a lot of variation. It's not like it's dropping super low at idle uh, or low cruising speeds where we're kind of concerned that we might slip a clutch or whatever. So, you know, I do like that aspect of it. You know, we could design these fixed pressure valve bodies to have hydraulic load, but you will get a more consistent feel, which to me is not, I shouldn't say feel, consistent pressure, which to me is not necessarily desirable. I like some variation with RPM. Uh, you don't want the pressure to run away on you, you know, with a lot of RPM. And what I mean by run away is get, you know, say go from 225 to 325 or 400 or something crazy uh, that's not you know that doesn't happen you know it's not that extreme but when you're giving it your all I do want to see a pressure rise so that's good and it doesn't drop too low ever so I think I, I hope that you know I hope that helps you because you know a lot of people wonder well geez you know why am I getting this variation is there a leak somewhere is something wrong no nothing's wrong it's just the spring rate is changing primarily uh, and yes you are overcoming some leaks don't forget all these units leak I mean I don't care how good you built them or how new they are they all have leaks internally it's just you know you don't want to have leaks that are just super excessive you know uh, these circuits are designed to have some leakage, and it's it's acceptable and normal. Now, you know, if, if it's a deal where, say, you know, it's really low at idle, you know, you're getting 20, 50 pounds or something, instead of, you know, 190, yeah, you could have a leak somewhere. Uh, and maybe it can overcome that, maybe it can't. You know, you will get to a point where you'll outpace the pump, and you just can't overcome any major leaks but uh, this is a normal well sealed unit everything is looking as it should and that's about what to expect at least with ours you know with the spring that we use you know if you use a you know this spring here say you modify the valve body and the spring is say you know twice as long uh, more coils that'll make the spring rate more consistent so you'll see less of a variation in pressure. Uh, so that's another way of kind of doing this. You know, the longer this spring gets, you know, if we make this spring, you know, as tall as the book here and put a lot of coils on it, yeah, it's going to be fairly consistent. You won't see much variation at all if you were to make it really long. But uh, we can't do that, obviously. We have space limitations within the valve body. Uh, you can definitely make it longer than what I have here by 
replacing the old boost valve or something, making a cover plate or whatever. There's other things you can do, but uh, again, I like the variation in pressure. So I hope that kind of answers this question and clears that up for you. Um, okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on another one.